Hello and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra 2 Designs and we are on week 10 of my 12 weeks of Christmas series. So let's jump right in. So for this week I did opt to kind of do something a little bit different. I'm going to make some ATCs which are artist trading cards and if you've never heard of them they're just kind of cards that you make that you trade with other artists. And there's no real rules to artist trading cards other than they need to be uh, two and a half by three and a half inches. So here you can see that I have a piece of five by seven cardstock. This is a watercolor cardstock by uh, Strathmore. I showed you that in the beginning there. And I'm just going to pounce um, my uh, piece of cardstock into these uh, oxide inks that I've kind of smushed down on the uh, craft mat part of my glass mat. You can kind of see that I've just pulled that off there and I'm going to keep pouncing it down. And the colors that I'm using are Spun Sugar, Worn Lipstick, Picked Raspberry, and Abandoned Coral. And every time that we uh, start pouncing again, I have dried. I didn't keep that in the video. I didn't think you guys really needed to see me dry it with my heat tool every time we uh, went from layer to layer. But if you don't dry it in between the layers, you will blend your colors. Uh, so if you want to layer your colors, you need to dry, and if you want to blend them, you need them wet still. So you can see that I kind of just smush down whichever color I want to work with and then I just add a little bit of water on top. Sometimes I run my finger through it just to kind of mix it up a little bit so I get less droplets and a little more of a kind of smeared look and sometimes I just leave it alone and get more of a droplets look. And I just keep working it back and forth until I like uh, the blend on the background. So the cool thing about this piece of 5x7 cardstock, of course, is that I'm going to get four ATCs out of this one piece of cardstock, which is kind of why I save these cardstocks. Um, I don't generally make 5x7 cards. That's not a size I tend towards, so this is great for when I want to make a group of ATCs like we're going to do today. So I am going to prep my cardstock with my anti-static powder tool because I do want to do some gold heat embossing. And I, I prepped it and then I dumped my embossing powder on just to make sure that my cardstock wasn't wet. And you can see there in the little bit on the bottom there's like a tiny bit of stuff that stayed but it's pretty much dry and we're good to go. Because if you embossed on uh, wet cardstock the embossing powder will stick to your wet spots so it'll emboss in places you don't want it. So I'm just going to really well anti-static powder that bottom there that was a little bit wet and then we're going to go into embossing. So this is kind of a fun technique that I've been doing lately where I take a stencil and then just uh, kind of pounce my Versamark into the wells of the stencil to add embossing powder. Um, you could definitely do this with a colored ink instead if you'd rather or you could there's so many techniques here you could do um, I just opted to do it this way because I love gold and pink together and now granted I know this isn't really Christmas themed necessarily but I felt that it really went well with the series that I'm kind of doing because uh, I love snowflakes if you, you guys have, I'm sure noticed this but um, I also love to make ATCs because I think that they're a great thing to create when you want to play with your um, anything, your new new anythings or um, you're not sure about an idea and you want to kind of try something out or that kind of thing. So I think ATCs really lend themselves towards um, giving you a chance to play with your supplies or try out new ideas because they're such a small scale. Um, and I do actually trade my ATCs with other artists. I have a binder of all of the cards that I've traded with others. Um, and I think it's just so great to flip through them and look at all of the inspiration that I've gotten from other artists. Or sometimes it's just fun to flip through them for entertainment value. Um, I, and you never find where you're going to find inspiration from. Like you never know, sorry. You never know where you'll find some inspiration. So I think that that's just such a great thing to do is just to trade these with other artists. And I think that's just a lot of fun. So I am creating a background that's one big piece because I think it, it helps the, uh, when you cut them, make it look more seamless um, than if I had pre-cut them and then tried to do this on all four. Also, this is easier than doing it the other way. Uh, but either way would work if that's your preferred method. It doesn't really matter. It's just this is what I came up with at the time, so this is what I'm sticking with. So I sprinkled on some Brutus and Monroe gilded embossing powder. This is, well, this is the only gold embossing powder I've ever tried, so I'm going to tell you it's my favorite. Um, I've never tried any of them. I've seen some stunning ones from WoW. Uh, I haven't got any of them in my hands yet. I'm working on that. Um, wow is a bit, I found it harder to find in Canada. Uh, if you guys are Canadian and you know where I can get some, let me know. Uh, but I've had a hard time finding it. So, or if there's embossing powder that you really love, I'd love to know what the brands are. Um, I don't, 
uh, play with embossing powder as much as I wish I did because it's just stunning and adds so much to a card but I just don't use it as often as I could so I would like to kind of branch out and try some different ones so here you go this is it all heat embossed and ready to go just gonna show you and then we're gonna cut it down so this is perfect two and a half by three and a half is the exact five by seven card so cut it in two quarters and there you have four perfectly sized ATCs um, and then we're just going to continue on from this point. I think that this is a good place to trim down the cardstock because we've pretty much created our background. Like I feel the background's done. Other than I'm going to add a gold edging to all of these cards. I think that that just helps finish it off and makes them look like they're individual. Like they weren't just cut out of a bigger sheet, although they were. Um, this kind of just adds that bit of extra trim a bit of extra and it sparkle which I also love and I think that that just helps them kind of stand out on their own as their own individual pieces you don't need to add this this is a little bit extra but I like how it looks and I find that it kind of finishes what you're creating also you could absolutely turn this into a card I'm opting to make this ATCs but you don't need to you could totally do this as a card instead so I've got just some regular white cardstock here. This is Nina 80 pound. And I'm just, these are scraps that I've just had from trimming off uh, cardstock from cards or whatnot. And I'm just going to cut out, I believe I cut out uh, nine snowflakes in the beginning. In the end, I need 10. So I do cut out an extra one off screen. And I'm not going to show you them all. I'm just going to show you this one set of three because it's just, that's easier. And then I've kind of laid out all of my snowflakes how I want them, except on that fourth card, because I want to use some of the pieces that I trim off of these ones to uh, kind of embellish that card so that I'm not wasting a bunch of cardstock, as I can't, I can't put it on the inside of the, the ATC because there is none which is something I kind of do like to do if I'm trimming an image like a snowflake and there's enough coming off of the edge that you would know what it is. I like to save that and put it on the inside of the card. However, there is no inside of the card in this case. And I actually opted to do these in gold first and decided that it was too much gold. Um, also, the gold that I have in cardstock didn't match the embossing powder, so it did kind of take away from the design a little bit. So I ended up going with white because I thought that it helped the gold and the pink in the background shine but it still uh, had these beautiful snowflakes sitting on top that you could kind of tell were a part of the focal as well like nothing on this specifically screams focal uh, you could this is why I think it would lend itself really well to a card design if you uh, cut out a uh, sentiment and put it on top like down to one of the corners I think that that would look really stunning but I really wanted to make the ATCs uh, I haven't made an ATC in ooh, quite a while, which is kind of sad because there's so much fun to trade with other people. Uh, but I just get stuck into making cards because I love making cards too. Then there's just not enough time to create all the things that I want to create. And I thought that this would be kind of fun addition. Uh, not everybody's ever heard of um, an artist trading card, an ATC. So I thought this would be kind of a fun uh, introduction if you don't know what they are. And it, maybe you'd be interested in checking them out. Um, I'm a part of a couple of Facebook groups that you can trade in, and that's kind of where I, I just post them there and people show me what they have to trade and I pick something out of their cards and then there you go, we, we just trade our cards uh, that way. So it's a pretty neat process and it's really fun to kind of play with your creative style as well or do things that you maybe think that a card would be too big for. This really lends itself well to that. So you can see here that I'm using, this is uh, the Simon Says Stamp, Stamp Craft Tacky Glue. This is a new one for me, but I really wanted to try it because it has such a fine tip at the end. And I'm I, you can't really tell because these are so small, but I'm just putting some really small dabs of glue on uh, the snowflake the back. And then I'm holding it down with an acrylic block once I uh, get it adhered. You could theoretically lift these up a little bit. I don't simply because uh, like you're gonna mail these obviously right uh, so I don't opt to lift any of the snowflakes but if you made this into a card you absolutely could uh, so here I'm just adding a couple of gems mostly to the centers of the snowflakes I think it just adds a little bit of something extra uh, except on the one where it was the fourth one where I kind of added edges of the other snowflakes 
um, that one I'm going to add uh, gems just kind of in a few places around it to kind of just add a little bit of extra shimmer and shine. So I hope you guys kind of liked this little bit of a different video. Um, I really love artist trading cards. I think they're a lot of fun. I think that they're an amazing way to uh, make something that you can trade with other artists. Uh, I just think it's such a cool idea. But oh, sorry, my cat gets in the, the frame here. But yeah, so that's, that is this week's Christmas video. I hope you enjoyed them. I'm going to hold them up here so you can kind of take a gander at all that uh, gold embossing powder that's just so sparkly there. You can't really see the gems, sadly, but I think that they turned out pretty great. If you like this video, please leave me a like, leave me a comment. I love hearing from you guys. And if you aren't subscribed, I'd love if you'd consider subscribing. We have two more Christmas videos, and then we're going to jump into the new year and do, I think we're going to do something a little bit different. I think we're going to uh, look at uh, trying out some different things. So let me know what you guys think. I uh, can't wait to hear from you, and I can't wait to see you again. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.